Hi, my name is Chris. And I'm Iago. And we're from Kinfolk. Um, we've got a tool that we've been working on at Kinfolk called CubeSpawn. It's a tool for spinning up multi-node local clusters, use, um, uh, Kubernetes clusters, um, on Linux machines. Um, it does this by using uh, OS containers, which are very similar to app containers in that they run on the host kernel, uh, but you have an entire operating system. And in this case, we're using the CoreOS container Linux um, operating system image. Um, so, uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to show um, what, how kubespawn sets this up using the up command, um, and then we're going to deploy a demonstration application called microservices demo, um, or sock shop, uh, which is created from our friends at um, Weave Works. So let's get started. So let's just check our go path, pretty standard location. And uh, we're currently in the kubespawn uh, repository directory under the go path. So yeah, unfortunately, we do actually have to disable um, SE Linux as there's a problem with pulling um, images with machine CTL on Fedora 26, is which we're, which we're running on. Um, so we can see that we actually prefetched uh, this CoreOS Linux image. It's a little large, so we're trying to save time. In, uh, but we have not created any machines. Um, okay, so let's run the cube spawn up command. We're going to create a cluster with three nodes. You do that just with using the up sub command and telling it how many nodes you want. So what this does, it will do the fetching of the image for you if you haven't done that already. Um, it will provision the nodes and set them up. Um, and then it uses kube ADM to set up Kubernetes on those nodes. Um, and this takes a little bit of a time. Um, the, where we're at right now um, takes the longest, so we'll actually cut back to this once that's all over. So we're back. Um, so our Kubernetes uh, cluster is set up. Um, let's set up our kube config um, environment variable. All right, and let's see what the state of our nodes are. Um, they're not quite ready yet, so this gives us a little bit of time to look around and see what kube spawn created for us. Um, in the current directory, you will find a dot kube spawn directory. This is where um, kube spawn puts uh, the kube config file. Um, and it has, for each node, there's a directory, and then there's a mount point. This is the mount point for the uh, varlib docker inside of each node. Uh, there's also a token, and then there's uh, the extras directory has a socat binary in it because um, Chorus Container Linux does not include that, um, so we mount that in there so that we can do port forwarding. Mm. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the state of our nodes again nodes need to be ready uh, so we can do the deployment. All right, cool, they're ready. Uh, note that um, kubespawn uh, zero is the master, the others are the working nodes. All right, so let's uh, go to the other tab here. Um, here we are in the deploy slash Kubernetes directory of the microservices demo um, repository. And inside of there, um, yeah, we have to Set that again. So um, what we need first need to do is set up our namespace. Uh, it requires a sock-shop um, namespace. And then we can simply do a cube CTO. Oh, we want to look at it. OK. So what do we find here, Iago? So we have uh, the YAML file for the sock shop uh, application. So we have uh, uh, some deployments, some services. So as you can see, this is a microservice application, so it has a lot of things. There's a microservice for cards, a microservice for the catalog database, for the catalog itself, so a lot of microservices. Yes, My MySQL, MongoDB, uh, and I think uh, RabbitMQ. So. Yeah. So let's uh, deploy this. Sure. Okie dokie. So um, this is being deployed onto the Kubernetes cluster. And that's done, but let's check the 
what do we want to do? Just check the state of the, the pods in that namespace. All right, so these are uh, still getting ready. Okay, so all of the pods are running and ready, so this means we can actually take a look at the uh, sock shop application. So, uh, but first we need to know the IP address of this. Uh, yeah, so you can see that there's a service for the front end, and the external IP is nodes, so that means it uses, uh, yeah. So you can access any worker node on this port, and you will access the, the actual shop. Yes, but how do we get those so worker it, node IP addresses? Yeah, let's figure out that by running machinectl. So we can see our three nodes here and the IP addresses. So as Chris said before, uh, the zero is the master. And so we will get, uh, I don't know, number two, for example. So this IP. And then we'll use this port 30001. And there we go. Weave socks. So yeah, we're actually running a rather complicated or you know complex uh, application on top of our local uh, multi-node uh, Kubernetes cluster. And that's actually what we wanted to show. So I guess we're pretty much finished here. Um, and we probably want to know how to stop the Kubernetes cluster, right? Sure. So there's another command. Oh, but we're in the wrong terminal now. Uh, there's the command stop, and that's basically it. Okay, that's it. Uh, yeah, so I hope you find this tool um, useful, as useful as we do in testing. Um, you know, it was basically originally made for testing uh, Kubernetes patches, uh, but we find it also interesting just to play around with Kubernetes and, uh, you know, to learn more about it. Um, so, yeah, thanks, bye.